Hello, everybody. Today we are going to learn about the sequential control circuit. On production machinery equipped with multiple electric motors, each motor plays a different role and sometimes needs to be started or stopped in a certain order to ensure the reasonable operation process and safe and reliable operation. In the control mode of the spindle motor and cooling pump motor of the lathe, the cooling pump motor can only be started after the spindle motor is started. When the spindle motor is not started, the cooling pump motor cannot be started. It can also be understood that the start of the cooling pump motor is controlled by the start of the spindle motor. As the name suggests, sequential control refers to multiple control objects working in sequence. It should be noted that the objects controlled in sequence are not one, but multiple objects for order control. We analyze the circuit principle by using two electric motors for sequential start control as an example. Two electric motors have two sets of control circuits, both containing the main circuit and control circuit. How do these two circuits achieve a functional connection between sequential actions? There are two methods, one is to achieve sequential control on the main circuit, and the other is to achieve sequential control on the control circuit. Firstly, we will analyze the circuit composition and working principle of the main circuit to achieve sequential control. Let's take a look at the composition of the line first. Compared with the one-way continuous control line learned earlier, what are the differences between this line? It can be seen that in the main circuit, the control component of motor M1 is contactor KM1, while the control component of motor M2 not only is contactor KM2, but also contactor KM1. In the control circuit, the start control of KM1 and KM2 is separate. The start button of KM1 is SB1, and the start button of KM2 is SB2. The stop button is SB3, which controls the stop operation of KM1 and KM2. Let's analyze the working principle of this circuit. First turn on the power switch QS. Start the motor M1 first forward slash forward slash press the start button SB1 starting from L1, pass through FU2, SB3, SB1, KM1, and return to L2, forming a path, the coil of contactor KM1 is energized. The main contact of KM1 is closed, and the motor M1 starts. The auxiliary normally open contact of KM1 is closed, and the motor M1 remains running after releasing button SB1. Press button SB2, start from L1, pass through FU2, SB3, SB2, KM2, and return to L2, forming a path, and the coil of contactor KM2 is energized. The main contacts of KM2 are closed, and the main contacts of the two contactors KM1 and KM2 between motor M2 and the power switch are both closed, causing motor M2 to start. The auxiliary normally open contact of KM2 is closed, and the motor M2 remains running after releasing button SB2. Press the stop button SB3, and all the coils of contactors KM1 and KM2 in the control circuit will lose power. The main contacts will be disconnected, and both motors M1 and M2 will stop running. If motor M1 is not started and only motor M2 is started, will motor M2 work? Let's analyze it. Do not press SB1, just press SB2, starting from L1, passing through FU2, SB3, SB2, KM2, and returning to L2, forming a path, and the coil of contactor KM2 is powered on. The main contact of KM2 is closed. However, due to the main contact of contactor KM1 not being closed, motor M2 cannot be powered on for operation at this time. The motors M1 and M2 have achieved sequential control, with M1 starting first before M2 can start. This is the circuit diagram of the grinding machine, which is also the circuit diagram for sequential control in the main circuit. The control component of M2 is the connector X1, and the control of M2 is subject to KM1 and X1. Only when KM1 is powered on and motor M1 starts, can motor M2 be started by closing X1. In addition to achieving sequential control in the main circuit, it can also be achieved in the control circuit. This is the circuit that controls the sequential control of the circuit. Let's analyze its circuit composition and working principle. Let's take a look at the circuit composition first. Unlike the sequential control method implemented in the main circuit, there is no correlation between the control components KM1 and KM2 of motors M1 and M2 on the main circuit, and they do not affect each other. But in the control circuit, it is different. 
KM1's control method is unidirectional one-way continuous control, which is self-locking control. The control of KM2 is also self-locking control, but the self-locking control of KM2 is connected below the control element SB2 and normally open contact KM1 of KM1. How does this connection achieve sequential control? Next, we will analyze the control process of this circuit. Firstly, turn on the power switch QS. Start motor M1. Press the start button SB2, start from L1, pass through FU2, SB1, SB2, KM1, and return to L2, forming a path, and the coil of contactor KM1 is energized. The main contact of KM1 is closed, and the motor M1 achieves continuous operation. The auxiliary normally open contact of KM1 is closed, and the motor M1 remains running after releasing button SB2. M2 is only started after M1 is started. Press button SB3, start from L1, pass through FU2, KM1, SB3, KM2, and return to L2, forming a path, and the coil of contactor KM2 is energized. The main contact of KM2 is closed, and the motor M2 starts. The auxiliary normally open contact of KM2 is closed, and the motor M2 remains running after releasing button SB3. If you want to stop the operation of the motor, press the stop button SB1, and all the coils of contactors KM1 and KM2 in the control circuit will lose power. The main contacts will all be disconnected, and both motors M1 and M2 will stop running. If motor M1 is not started and only motor M2 is started, will motor M2 work? Let's analyze it. Do not press SB2, only press SB3, starting from L1, passing through FU2 and SB1. After this point, due to the normally open contacts of SB2 and KM1 being disconnected, the coil of contactor KM2 cannot be energized, and the main contact of KM2 cannot be closed. At this time, motor M2 cannot operate. Compare the two implementation methods of sequential control with the same goal of achieving sequential starting of multiple motors. When implementing the main circuit, it should be noted that the main circuit of the second motor should be connected below the main contact of the first motor control contactor. When implementing the control circuit, the auxiliary normally open contacts of the first motor control contactor should be connected in series above the contactor of the second motor. When there is a fault in the circuit, we need to use an instrument to diagnose it. The method of using the resistance range of a multimeter to measure the resistance values of each point in the circuit to determine the fault point is called the resistance measurement method. The commonly used resistance measurement methods are divided into resistance step measurement method and resistance segmented measurement method. Today we will learn about the stepwise measurement method of resistance. This method takes a certain point in the circuit as the reference point. Generally, one meter rod is placed at the starting or ending point, and the other meter rod measures the resistance in sequence in the circuit. Determine whether the circuit is normal through resistance measurement. The measurement process. Disconnect the power supply first, or remove the fuse. Turn the multimeter to the resistance position and hold down SB2. Then measure the resistance values of points 1 to 3, 1 to 5, 1 to 7, 1 to 9, 1 to 11, and 1 to 0 step by step. When a certain label is measured, if the resistance value is different from the theoretical value, it indicates that there is a problem at the contact or connecting wire that the meter rod has just crossed. Under normal circumstances, the resistance values of each section are shown in the figure. Turn the multimeter to the resistance position and press button SB2 without releasing it. The measurement results are as follows. Please analyze where the fault is located. Okay, it is a button issue between line 5 and line 7. Looking at another situation, turn the multimeter to the resistance position and press button SB2 without releasing it. The measurement results are as follows. Where is the fault analyzed? Okay. It's a component issue between line 9 and line 11. If the multimeter is turned to the resistance position and button SB2 is pressed and held, the measurement results are all infinity, where is the problem? This may be a problem with the components between line 1 and line 3, or it may be a problem with the multimeter. Comparison of stepwise and segmented measurement methods. The comparison between the two methods is shown in the figure. Overall, the step measurement method has high efficiency and speed, 
but it is cumbersome for measuring natural breakpoints. The segmented measurement method is convenient for measuring natural breakpoints, but there are many measurement points. Whether it is a step measurement method or a segmented measurement method, there are some issues to pay attention to. Be sure to disconnect the power supply. When using the resistance measurement method to check faults. If the measured circuit is connected in parallel with other circuits, parasitic circuits, the circuit must be disconnected from other circuits, otherwise the measured resistance value will be inaccurate. To measure high-resistance electrical components, turn the resistance gear of the multimeter to the appropriate range gear position. Finally, let's take a look at the relevant exercises in this section. That's all for the knowledge learning of this class. See you next time.